Good morning, students, parents, faculty, staff, and special guests. My name is Heather Solnowski, and I am the head of school of the Benjamin Franklin Classical Charter Public School. It is my distinct honor to welcome you today to our first day of capstone presentations. I could not be more proud of the 45 eighth grade students we have sitting in front of us today. Their hard work, dedication, and caring spirit has guided them here today where they will share with us individually planned and executed community service projects that they have successfully completed. Fifteen months ago, most of these students were here in this auditorium as our capstone coordinator, Mr. Heater, and Mr. Perna introduced them to this intensive project. They have worked through the steps of brainstorming, researching, developing, and executing a project that they feel passionate about to support an organization or raise awareness of a specific cause that's important to them. Today and tomorrow, we have the privilege to listen to the work that these amazing students have accomplished in the past 15 months. We will hear about their projects, the organizations they worked with, the goals that they set for themselves, the obstacles that they faced, in striving to reach their goals and what they have learned in the process. It has been said that one individual who is determined to make a difference in the world can, with desire, drive, dedication, discipline, passion, and persistence, the world can be altered and billions of people's lives can be impacted positively in an unimaginable way. Just imagine the impact that these 50, 45 young men and women have had on this world. I promise you that after hearing from these students over the course of the next two days, that you will not only be as proud of them as we are today, but you will be inspired by the stories you hear, the goals they have reached, and the impact they have had on their local, national, and global communities. Today we are so fortunate to be joined by Mr. Eamon McCarthy Earls. Mr. McCarthy Earls is an alumni of BSCCPS graduating in 2008. After attending Franklin High School, he matriculated at UMass Amherst, where he earned a bachelor's degree in geography, geology and history. Mr. Earls continued this education by earning his MBA from Western Governors University. Mr. Earls is a published writer, publishing his first book on the history of Franklin while still attending Franklin High School. Mr. McCarthy Earls' dedication to serving his community and his love of Franklin, Massachusetts came together last year as he ran for and was elected to a seat on the Franklin Town Council. We are very grateful that he has agreed to not only attend our capstone presentations this year, but also to address our students today. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Eamon McCarthy Earls back to the FCC. Well, first of all, a very big thanks to Ms. Olnatsky and everyone in the BFCCPS community for having me in today. My remarks today will be pretty brief because I want to have an opportunity to hear from all of you about the amazing projects that you're working on. Having a chance to leaf through the, uh, the capstone book, but I was very, very impressed by the, the wide array of different projects that people have been, have been working on. Everything from children with, uh, with food allergies to the Big Cat Project uh, you know, through the National Geographic Society and uh, the Pine Street Inn or or pan pancreatic uh, cancer action networks and, and so forth. So very, very impressive, all the things that you folks have been working on. And I really am looking forward to, hear to hearing all about it. It's a little surreal to be back here uh, in the, the charter school, 10 years on from when I was giving my own uh, capstone talk back in 2008. While some things have changed since 2008, a lot fewer flip phones, um, many things remain the same. And I think one of the things that's always going to be true, no matter what year or what decade we're living in, is the importance of service and the things that it can teach you as a person, tenacity, organization, entrepreneurship, drive, all of these things translate to a very, very important um, sort of set of lessons in life that you can take with you, no matter what your age or, or what you're working on in life. It's really fascinating to see what folks that I knew um, when I was in the seventh and eighth grade here at the charter school have moved on to do now. Some are working for the US Supreme Court, advising Supreme Court justices. Others are playing country music in Nashville. Still others are in divinity school or raising, raising young children. So there's all kinds of things in store for many of you. And the lessons you've learned here, working on your capstone projects, will help to inform those, those missions in your life as you move forward. Uh, when I was here 10 years back, I had a chance to work on a capstone project right here in Franklin, gathering used bicycles that people would often throw in metal bins to be recycled, and instead, packing them into shipping containers and sending them to Africa, to countries like Ghana, or also to the Caribbean, to countries like St. Kitts and Nevis, 
where people don't often have access to cars and need a way to get to school or get to market. And something as simple as a bicycle can revolutionize their life. So I'm very, very excited to hear from all of you today, and I'll keep my remarks short at that. But thank you so much for having me in, and the things you learn here will follow you going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim, and we're very excited to have you back at BFCCPS. Our first group to present today is Mrs. McGarvey's group. I am completely prepared, but that was a wonderful speech, so I don't know if I can follow your act. I'll try as best I can. Okay, hello everyone. Hi. I'll be ready for a great bunch of presenters today. I was going to say raise the room, but only in my uh, age group do we understand what raise the room really is. Okay, for those of you who are unfamiliar with me, my name is Mrs. Mogaro. And yes, I know, strong accent on the ass for all of you. I feel very privileged to have been given the opportunity to be an advisor to this inspiring group of eighth graders. I have been able to accompany them in the path of completing their capstone projects. The completion of which represents two things. The first, being able to work on a project independently. And the second, closing the chapter on their journey here at BFCCPS. Without further ado, I would love to introduce to you our first presenter, who actually needs no introduction at all. <laughs> yes, it is Mia, Mia Magliari, who will discuss food allergies. Good morning, students, parents, and faculty here at BFCCPS. My name, as you know, is Mia Magliari. Uh, now, I hope you all are ready to sit through all of our speeches for two hours, because everyone's speeches have to be at least four minutes and 30 seconds long, so my apologies in advance. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to start by talking to you about food allergies. In basic terms, a food allergy is one's immune system tending to overreact to an otherwise harmless food protein. These allergic reactions can vary greatly, but can often develop to a severe life-threatening reaction like anaphylaxis where one may feel itching and swelling, which progresses to more severe symptoms like tetanus of the throat and chest and difficulty breathing. Because of the constant threat of a possible reaction, people with food allergies, especially severe ones, are forced to avoid whatever foods they are allergic to in order to stay safe. Up to 15 million Americans have food allergies, including 5.9 million kids. That's about two kids in every classroom. I'm sure that there are many of you who can relate to these millions of people. You may have a food allergy, or maybe you know someone who has one. I know I do. The organization that I work with for my capstone project is called FAIR, or Food Allergy Research and Education. This organization is a voice of the food allergy community and is dedicated to making the world a safer, healthier, and more inclusive place for those with food allergies. Their website offers information about living with food allergies, such as how to stay safe from allergens, as well as information on how to keep others safe if you do not have food allergies. This brings me to why I chose this project. When I myself was four years old, my parents found out the hard way that I had a life-threatening allergy to peanuts and all types of nuts when I was on a plane that had served peanuts on the previous flight. I also have an egg allergy. Fears resources were essential in helping my parents learn about my allergies and to find valuable information on alternatives for foods I had to avoid. By doing this project, I was essentially returning the favor that Fair did for my family and me. I had three goals that I wanted to accomplish in my capsule project. My first goal was to raise awareness of my cause within my school community by having a story time with the kids in the grades K through four, where I would read a story about a child with a food allergy with some discussion and question time, and also handing out fair brochures with information to grades five through eight. My second goal was to raise at least one hundred dollars for Fair's allergy research, which Fair uses to find a cure for allergies and fund their programs by holding a basket raffle that was held in October. My third and final goal was more of a personal goal. I wanted to improve my time management by using reminders on my cell phone, which is usually never more than five feet away from me unless I'm at school, and a planner to keep track of due dates. Some obstacles I faced during this project were overambition, communication fears, and time management. I learned many things in the process of working through these challenges. In the beginning, I created a much larger and more complicated project that I realized would not be realistic at the time frame available. I also needed to manage my time and balance the project against other school priorities and obligations. Through working with my family and advisors for advice, as well as my fair contact, 
I learned I could have a more meaningful and focused project if I also narrowed down the scope and refocused my project goals. To further improve my time management, I made and enforced my own deadlines before actual due dates, which allowed me to finish most of the work I had to do early. When I had to talk to adults, I would get very nervous and put off contacting them until the very last minute, which caused me to have to rush for parts of my project. I overcame my fears of reaching out to strangers by creating a script for phone messages and an email template to make initial contact, and work with my parents and advisors to be sure I sounded professional and respectful, as well as to be sure it, I was clear what I was inquiring about. I am very proud to announce that I raised $258.40 <coughs> for fair with the help of everyone who participated in my basket raffle, which well exceeded my goal and maybe matched with the fair board of directors. Over 200 students got to listen to the story about a child managing food allergies and discuss the topic with me. And I handed out over 200 brochures with information about fair. That's over 400 people that now have more awareness about food allergies and were educated about this great organization. I also ended up donating a copy of the storybook I read, as well as another book for young children about food allergies to our school library, so that other kids in the future might benefit from the stories. <coughs> I not only met and surpassed my goals, but I learned that focusing my project on fewer key activities tied in with the mission of the fair organization made it more meaningful, and that this was the kind of project spanning nearly a year, which required diligent follow-up and planning, as well as working on it a little each week to reduce stress and keep on track. I would like to say a huge thank you to the following people. <coughs> Marie McGoy from FAIR, my advisors, Ms. Daniel and Mrs. McGarrow, my advising group, Mr. Alfonso's advising group, my family, the K-4 teachers for letting me read to their classes, the FCCPS office staff, the stores that donated to my raffle baskets, everyone who bought raffle tickets to take a photo. Mr. Lasky and Mr. Perna, thank you all for listening. Have a great day. Great job. Don't ever change. All right. Secondly, I would like to say, it's a little joke that only us know, break a leg, Thomas Rogan. But I don't think you're lying. Thomas Rogan. Right. I'm so sorry. All right, Thomas Logan, well, and I put a pun in there as well, tackle homelessness. I'll try not to. <laughs> Hello, students and faculty of BFCCPS. My name is Thomas Hogan, and for my capstone project, I worked um, to tackle homelessness. Over 20,000 families are homeless just in Massachusetts, and there's a 47% denial rate for families trying to get into homeless shelters. The number of people experiencing homeless in Massachusetts has doubled in the last 28 years. Poverty, mental illness, and domestic violence are key contributors to homelessness. In the years 2016 and 2017, public schools were able to identify 21,112 students who were homeless, which is more than 52 times as many students as there are in this building. To help homelessness, I work with the Medway Family Shelter. Medway Family Shelter is a 12-family homeless shelter located in Medway, Massachusetts. The Medway Family Shelter provide housing for 49 families just last year, and their mission is to improve the quality of life of low-income and disadvantaged individuals and families by advocating for their needs and rights, providing services, and educating the community. Before the summer, I had three goals to complete. My first goal was to volunteer 10 hours at the Medway Family Shelter to play with the children there. When I first arrived, I realized that the children at the shelter often did not get a lot of time to play, especially outside. Playing with the children at the shelter also gave their parents time to work. My second goal was to hold a donation drive to create 15 welcome bags for the children entering the shelter. These bags would help the children's transition into the shelter easier and more enjoyable. I also had a personal goal before the capsule before the summer of learning how to pace myself and not to procrastinate throughout the capstone process. When I started to focus on my second goal, the welcome bags, I started looking out for single items for them, but I learned that it was better to buy the items for the bags in bulk. Because of this, I put the bags together myself. I also planned to get some of the items for the bags using donations from local businesses. In order to raise funds for these welcome bags, I held a raffle for candy to cover the cost of items I needed to purchase. I did not have to worry about educating the community about my cause, because I had to talk to people about homelessness and the Bedrock Family Shelter when I was selling the tickets. Over the capstone process, I encountered many obstacles, but probably the biggest problem was breaking my leg. This made it harder to finish my volunteer time and impossible to raise money for the welcome bags through labor. 
I had one hour of volunteer time left when I broke my leg. But luckily, I had my older brother to help me volunteer, and he played with the hard to handle two and three year olds while I could play with the seven and eight year olds. Another obstacle that I encountered was that I did not get my blue sheet approved for advertising my raffle for the candy in the school community. I overcame this obstacle by selling raffle tickets just to my relatives. I had another obstacle that I encountered that I did not expect. I learned that I have difficulty asking people and organizations for donations. Either it is that I am afraid they will say no, or I just feel uncomfortable asking them for money. I overcame this obstacle with the help of my mom. She encouraged me to talk to people and talked about my cause with me to others. Through the capstone process, I learned that it is easy to make a difference. The organization really appreciates what you're doing for them, and many people are very glad to help. When I went to collect the sim sacks from Four Kicks, the man in my who created us. He was very nice, and he seemed to be interested in my cause. I told him that all we needed to finish the welcome bags was the Play-Doh, and then he asked me would $20 cover their cost. I came out of Four Kicks that day with not only the sim sacks, but $20 and a good feeling in my heart. I created 24 welcome bags in total for the children coming in to the Medway Family Shelter, which surpassed my goal of 15 by 9. These welcome bags included items like toothpaste, toothbrushes, floss, and of course, play -Doh. I volunteered 11 hours at the Medway Family Shelter, which also surpassed my goal of 10 hours. And I don't think that I procrastinate, except for every time that I save my work until the last minute possible, but I won't count it. My capstone project would not have been nearly as successful if it did not have the help of and support of many people. I would like to thank my mom and family for supporting me and helping me finish my capstone process. My advisors and peers for helping me focus on my goals and supporting me through the capstone projects, and my relatives for, for purchasing raffle tickets. The Medway Family Shelter for letting me volunteer. Heidi Sia for working with me and finding times to volunteer and dropping my donations. Also donated to my project, like the 99 Restaurant for the Prance, Chestnut Dental for the Toothpaste, Toothbrushes and Floss, and Four Kicks for the Sin Sacks. And of course, all of you for listening. Thank you. Great job, Thomas. That's awesome. All right, next I have the lovely Amber, who is not nervous whatsoever. And she will talk so passionately about her capstone project with literacy. Hello, students, families, faculty, and special guests of the FCCPS. My name is Amber Dunlap. My capstone focus was literacy and providing books for at-risk, low-income, preschool-aged children. I had always known that not everyone could read, but as I searched for ideas, it occurred to me that it was not just reading that people are missing out on, but also the joy of books. I personally have always loved stories. Once I learned to read on my own, I came to a place where my parents would have to tell me to stop reading. Overall, I have appreciated the happiness a single book can bring anyone. That is why it saddened me to think that STEM young kids do not have the chance to find that happiness. Some parents do not have the time or the money to provide their children with books. I searched for a good organization to work with that helped these kids, and my favorite ended up being Books for Kids. I chose this organization not only because of their actions and ideas, but also the friendliness and enthusiasm that they portray. In addition to providing books for at-risk kids, Books for Kids also creates libraries across the country for kids to enjoy in their schools or towns and literacy programs. Overall, their goal is to promote literacy. Books for Kids transforms the lives of children through the love of reading. My goals for my capstone project included raising money and collecting books. My personal goal was to get all of my work done in a timely fashion. I planned to raise money by holding a book session for kindergarten and first graders. Each class of the four-week session consisted of the kids hearing a story, doing an activity or craft, and playing a game relating to the theme. My hope was to get at least 10 kids to sign up, $20 per kid, so I could raise $200. But I did not only want to raise money, I wanted to raise awareness and promote literacy. For my second goal of collecting books, I planned to hold a few book drives at, lo at local preschools, and I was able to ask some stores in the area for donations. I hope to collect at least 10 books. Lastly, for my third goal, I plan to write in my capstone journal weekly and create weekly goals for myself to stay on track. I faced a few obstacles throughout this process, but thankfully none too difficult to overcome. The first obstacle I faced was just receiving a yellow light after meeting with the panel. I did not have enough detail in my original action plan. 
with advice from my advisors and Mr. Heater, however, I was able to fix the problem and get a green light. This helped me get a better and more specific idea about what I was going to be doing and see my project in a better light. My second obstacle related to my third goal of writing in my journal. I was not consistent and I was not completing the weekly goals I set for myself, that is, when I set them. Though I never wrote in my journal every single week, I added to it enough to keep myself on track. And as my project slowed down and I did not have as much to work on, I did not create weekly goals for myself because it came to a place where I didn't have to. I'd rather be reading anyway. The final obstacle I faced was getting a concussion over the summer. This did not affect my capstone as much as one might think, but I had to put my plans on hold, and as soon as I was better, I got back to work. I am very proud of my capstone results. I was able to collect a total of $400 through my book session. I greatly enjoyed doing the book session, and I think the kids did too. I also learned to handle problems and think on the spot, because sometimes things would not go according to plan. After I sent the money to Books for Kids, I received a thank you package. The package included a note from a young child named Mia, a girl who was helped by Books for Kids. I was so happy that they appreciated my help so much and so touched when I read Mia's note. My second goal had some ups and downs with getting in contact with the book preschools and bookstores, but I managed to hold three book drives at three different preschools, and I bought six books from BJ's. I, hold to, I learned to communicate effectively with adults through this goal. I was really surprised when my total ended up being 100 books, and I can't wait to give them to books for kids. My third goal was a success, even if I was not perfect with my journal. I completed my project before the summer, even though I added to it in the fall, so I got my work done efficiently. It felt really awesome to do this project, and I hope I can do something similar in the future. There are many people I would like to thank for helping me through the custom process. Samantha Salloway and Christy Steele Garcia for working with me and being so supportive. My family for always being there and helping me whenever I needed it. My friends and advising group for supporting me all the way. Mrs. McGarrow and Ms. Daniel for being the best advisors ever and for giving me great ideas. Mr. Heater for putting me on the right track with my action plan. Jessica Sousa, Kim Barrett, Lisa Oxford, and Joanne Hogan for helping me collect books. All the kids who were in my book session for making the time we spent together so much fun and for donating money. The Harder family for donating an extra $20, and everyone who donated to my book drives for helping me reach a total of 100 books for children to enjoy. Before I leave this podium, I would like to end with a quote by Thomas Jefferson. I believe that every human mind feels pleasure in doing good to another. I would like the seventh graders and all upcoming Capstone participants to remember this quote as you are working on Capstone. Do not give up on yourself and stay motivated while doing Capstone, because you will be glad you went through with it. Thank you everyone for listening. Have an awesome rest of your day. I have next the fourth one, and by the way, all your parents are so proud of you. Put all the camcorders away. Thank you. Is the very loud Max Bowman who will discuss um, sports equipment for underprivileged children. Good morning, students, parents, and faculty of the SECPS. My name is Maxwell Bowman, and for my capstone project, I chose to work with an organization called Good Sports. Good Sports is an organization, organization that strives to give kids, underprivileged kids a life on benefit of sports and physical activity. They provide new equipment, apparel, and footwear to those most in need across the U.S., and have impacted over 3,400 organizations and 4.4 million kids. This has been possible because Good Sports has received over $22 million worth of donations since 2003. I chose this focus for my project because I have a passion for sports. From a young age, I have played and participated in many different sports. These tend to be very expensive, and over time, I came to realize there are other kids less fortunate than I am, who may not have enough money to pay for the equipment required to play sports. As I was looking through many different organizations and deciding who to work with, Good Sports stood out because of the massive impact they make on communities across the country. Picking goals to carry out is a crucial part of the Capstone project. They decide how you'll make your impact in the community. For my project, I had three goals in mind. My first goal was to volunteer over the course of a few days during the summer for a total of 10 hours. When I went to volunteer, the Good Sports staff was kind enough to give me a tour and explain how the organization worked. This helped me get a better understanding of their motives, while also showing me how successful they have been. Through my time volunteering, I, along with a few other boys, helped me reach a brand new shipment of equipment from Under Armour and Nike. For my second goal, I chose to host a 3v3 basketball tournament for grades 5 and 6. 
Although only six students participated, the tournament, the tournament went really well. We all lost track of time and everyone was disappointed when it came to an end. We all had fun and I was also able to educate them and the rest of grades five and six by promoting my event and talking about good sports during lunch and through flyers. For my personal goal, my third and final one, I chose to work on public speaking. I chose to do this because I often get nervous and fidgety when I present in front of large crowds. I chose to work on this by presenting a series of speeches to extended family, friends, and also to fifth and sixth grade lunch. Every one of the six speeches I did was helpful to my development as a good public speaker. Overall, my project was a success. I completed all my goals. For my first goal, I was able to volunteer a total of five hours over the course of three days. I learned the importance of volunteering my time to help others as I was working alongside other people who volunteer a lot and make a and really make a difference. For my second goal, originally I was to raise $100, but by only raising $30 and splitting with the co-host of the event, brought me down to $50. I was determined to reach my goal, so I started to ask for donations after my speeches and raised $120. Also, my father's company was able to match my donation to good sports, so I was, I was able to get my donation of $135 matched to $200. $270 overall exceeding my goal. For my third and final goal, I was able to present five, six speeches, including the ones at school, to raise awareness and help my public speaking skills. Those speeches also helped me raise money for my second goal. After all my work on speeches, I felt like they made a noticeable impact on my public speaking. Obstacles are a part of every capstone project, and I feel and I had my fair share of them. My first main obstacle is receiving a yellow light. I was prepared to get a green light right away, but I did not. I was not pleased, and with that, I was set back. But this did not affect much of my timeline. It, in fact, helped me think through and further through my project. My second obstacle is communicating with my organization. Originally, I planned to volunteer over the summer, but I had trouble reaching the staff to fit the schedule time. It took me all the way until September to finally get a chance to set up time. I was persistent with emailing and calling them, which paid off. My third and final obstacle I encountered was struggling to schedule and plan my event. I put up advertising the event until the week before. It also did not help as many students did not take the flyers, and the event was held on New Monday, so naturally many people, people forgot. I planned to do it in the beginning of the fall, where many other capstone projects were also being carried out, so I could not get as many people to attend. I overcame this by raising money a separate way to make up for the lack of people. All in all, I overcame all my obstacles with perseverance and dedication. This capstone project brought a whirlwind of ups and downs, and I could not have been able to do it without the help of many people. Thank you to Mr. Megaro, my advisor, and my fellow advisors for helping guide me through this project. I thank my parents for supporting, guiding, and helping me carry out my steps. I also thank Ethan for volunteering with me, the good support staff for helping me out with any questions I have, and also letting me volunteer, and everyone who donated. Lastly, thank you to Andrew and for hosting the event and me for showing up last minute to help us. Thank you for listening and have a great time. Max, that was great. I, I didn't see any fidgeting. I said you fidgeted. That was perfect. Lastly, I'd like to introduce you to a new addition to BFCCPS. I would like all of you to love and listen to a new addition, Kata Chambers. Who will discuss? Yes, Canada. Who will discuss to you that every pet needs a hug? Come on up. Welcome, faculty, parents, and friends of BFCCPS. My name is Carter Chambers, and I am the main creator of BFCCPS. For my capstone project, I chose to work with Medfield Animal Shelter. I chose this organization because it is a local nonprofit animal shelter, and I personally have more animals. At home, I have two dogs and two hamsters. My dogs' names are Rare and Robot, and I mean, no, they're Chocolate and Angel. My hamsters' names are Rare and Robot. And today, we are starting to dog sit for my mom's friend. Molly is a Labrador and one of the best dogs I've ever met. My animals mean so much to me, and I want to be able to help animals in need. My goals for this project include improving my public speaking skills, raising 30 item donations for the shelter, and raising awareness for the cause. Getting to help this organization helped me understand that a small shelter needs a big amount of support, and I wanted to be a part of that. My first goal that I chose was to improve my public speaking skills. Improving my public speaking skills meant that I would work on speaking in front of large groups, such as my 8th grade class. I did not know if it would count if I only spoke to my animals at home, plus it probably wouldn't be that same. I began by practicing to a large group at school and that included kindergarten classes. 
This will affect me by helping me to practice my speech, and even though it made me nervous, I knew it had to be repeated. I chose public speaking because I felt strongly that I had to improve in this area of my weaknesses. I was never good at speaking in front of large groups, and this was a great challenge. Choosing the school of my capstone project, and he had to shot in front of classes to announce my project, what I was doing, and announce what was being collected for donations. So my second goal that I chose to raise was to raise at least 30 donations for the animal shelter. Raising 30 donations was my plan. I had no idea that I would shift my goal by raising a little bit more than 90 donations. In order to raise donations, I put flyers around our school and talked to the kindergartners about things they could bring in for the Medfield Animal Shelter. Some of the items needed were food for the animals, toys, cleaning supplies, blankets, and gift cards. I put boxes around the school so students and parents could make donations to my cause. After three weeks of collecting donations, I had raised just over 90 donations. I felt like I had helped a lot of animals have a better and happier stay at the shelter. My last goal was to raise awareness for such a cause. I did this by creating flyers and hanging them around the school with my advisor, Mrs. Madaro. I also spoke to kindergarten classes about my cause. I additionally put a paragraph about my capstone park in the Ben's Buzz newsletter with a link to my Google control flyer. I did this to further reach out to my community. I feel that raising awareness helps students and parents with more aware of the problems in our world and be prepared to bring in donations over the three-month period. With such a huge project, many problems and struggles come with it. One of my main problems in doing this is Capstone Project was entering the BFCCPF this year. It would be behind everyone else who has served the Capstone Project in such a grade. With this in mind, I had to work harder and faster to catch up with everybody else. Whether I had getting donations earlier, I knew it had to be done. A second obstacle encountered during my Capstone Project was that I had to plan to make bracelets with the shelter's name on it, but that did not happen because I was already giving the okay to collect donations in the school. I, said, uh, I had to spread awareness in other ways. The last obstacle I am facing is my fear of public speaking. How am I doing? Good? No sweat. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm raising awareness, I had to speak in front of kindergarten classes, and those were only five year olds, and I didn't want to do that. The thought of speaking in front of half the school, my teachers, and a lot of parents made me want to call into a phone and cry for all of eternity. This was very true. My capstone project was like an exciting roller coaster that I got stuck several times along the way. In the end, I got to feel the joy of helping animals. I raised over 90 donations for the Medfield Animal Shelter to help the shelter and animals in need. I felt pressured to work hard, harder to get my capstone project done, but I'm happy I got to help animals since I wanted my many passions. I could not have done this project so quickly. I would like to thank my advisors, Mrs. Magaro and Ms. Daniel, for helping me so much with this project. Marlene, the shelter manager, for allowing me to bring in donations and spend a lot of the time, a lot of time with animals, showing them lots of care, love, and affection. And my mom for driving me to and from the shelter every week and for sticking around while I had to pet every single animal. And everyone who donated to the end of the shelter. Thank you for having me and listening. I would like to ask Mrs. Magaro's group to please stand so we can give them a round of applause as a group. Medium that that was from, but you're going to have to figure it out and let me know later. Um, but I am going to vote for more dress up days because you look marvelous. I'm very excited to hear um, my wonderful advising group complete their final step of their capstone projects today. And I want you to know that this is your moment to shine. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce them to you. They know I am challenged with um, adding extra R's and W's and A's um, in their names. So I have worked very hard on this. And my first student today um, advised, in my advising group that is going to tell you what her capstone project is, is Abby Shoneman. Hello students, parents, and faculty of BSCCPS. I am Abby Shoneman, and this past year, I got the privilege to work with the Elisha Project. Today, I would like to teach, inspire, and encourage you by telling you about my capstone project. For my capstone, I decided to work with the Elisha Project. 
The Elijah Project is an organization where they feed the hungry and homeless. People who are given the food are in a poor and brutal situation. This nonprofit organization gives you an opportunity to make and prepare the food for the people in need. Have you ever experienced hunger? Ever have to worry about where your next meal will come from? Probably not, but in the streets of Providence, Rhode Island, things are different. The Elisha Project is changing that. The Elisha Project has been running for five years, and it started with one man giving out a few sandwiches to people on the street. He continued this to become a bigger organization that is now planned and has started to continue into New York. My church has attended this organization a couple of times. My family and I have attended this as well. I had previously wanted to go back and help more, so I decided for Capstone I would do just that. The reason that this organization is, such, is so special is that you're not just donating food and materials, but you are helping make the food. Volunteering with the people who work at the Elisha Project is an amazing involvement, but the experience of giving out food to underprivileged people was the most amazing thing. People that you help are kind and thankful. I learned something from the people that I served. They were still happy and wanted to have conversations with you. Seeing the faces of the people who are getting the soup, chips, water, and other food was the greatest thing. People's faces were so genuine and thankful that you were giving some of your time and energy. I learned to be more thankful for the things I have and to be more appreciative to people who helped me. After receiving a green light by my advisor and Mr. Pernum, I immediately began my three goals. My first goal was to have a bake sale at a local park to raise money for the election budget. I started to plan the right date and time that I would do this with my friend, Lindsay Tarantola. We ended up with about $100 each from our sale. We had fun and a great time together. My second goal was to reach the second graders at our school. First, I had to pick a book. And as none in the library grabbed my attention, I decided to pick the book my mom made for her art school. My mom had done a small picture book based on Harold and the Purple Crayon, called What Would You Do with Harold the Purple Crayon? Where my mom had taken pictures and added drawings that people, of things that people needed, like food and clothes. This reading went very well, and the second graders comprehended the subject and knew what I was talking about. I then, in June, started my third goal of volunteering at the Elijah Project ten times. This, I learned, was a very aggressive goal, and I knew this would take a lot of time and a lot of effort. I finished all my goals successfully in half. I also tried to work towards being focused throughout the whole project. I felt very lucky and fortunate that I only had one major obstacle, timing. The timing between the schedule of the Elijah Project and my personal schedule was conflicting, and I had to rearrange and miss a few things to volunteer. Overall, though, this obstacle taught me that giving up your special things for, other, for helping others is worth it, and probably better in the long run. I did overcome this obstacle by learning to go every other week, and sometimes giving up things I wanted to do to finish my goal. Overcoming this obstacle felt great, and I'm happy that my project went well. What is the definition of capstone? The definition of capstone is a finishing stone of a structure. The 8th grade's finishing stone to their time at Charter is capstone. This is the last big mark. So to all the seventh graders starting and working through your through the progress, give Capstone your, your all. You won't regret it. I would like to thank the many people that encouraged and supported me throughout my project. Without the support and help from my peers and family, I would not have stayed this calm and completed my project as successfully. I'd like to thank my parents for driving me all over the place and giving their time. I would like to thank my friends who came with me to volunteer. My advising group for being there to help whenever I was stuck in an idea. Lindsay for helping with the bake sale, Mr. Perna and Ms. Solnowski for helping our home grade and I through this project, George Ortiz from the Elisha Project to, for helping me volunteer for this amazing cause that he's been working for, <coughs> my advisor, Coach Simpson, for always humoring us and helping us along the way. And lastly, thank you for listening to my custom presentation. Thank you, Abby. That was wonderful. Next up, I'd like to introduce Emily Medeiros. Good afternoon, students, parents, and faculty of BFCPS. How's everyone doing? Comfortable? Well, I'm not. My name is Emily Medeiros, and for my capstone project, I chose a scoliosis department located at Boston Children's Hospital. I chose this project because it was very personal to me. You see, in 2013, my doctor discovered during one of my annual checkout visits that I had a mild case of scoliosis. 
Scoliosis is a back disorder causing your spine to curve at an angle. The angles range from mild to severe. When my parents were told of my situation, we made several visits to the hospital for x-rays. From that point forward, I knew that we'd go into Boston quite often. Since the diagnosis, there have been lots of visits, lots of x-rays, and loads of mileage. My spine is still in pain. There's been absolutely no doctor who can give my parents the correct answer as to why I still ache. Although the aches have subsided, my eyes still reminded of certain activities I cannot participate in. Did you know that I was going to be the next Gabby Douglas? Now my dreams have been shattered. As you can guess, gymnastics was a sport that I could not participate in. And to be honest, I wasn't that good. The long hours of sitting in a chair is very uncomfortable too. But I keep pushing for that A plus grade. How am I going to teach? <laughs> I began my project by contacting the organization for scoliosis. When I received my thumbs up, I was able to speak to the lower grades and highlight what my cast on project was all about. They looked at me like a deer in headlights and repeated the words scoliosis several times. I think they enjoyed saying it ten times fast rather than listening to my speech. It soon changed when I asked if anyone had a parent that might mention their back aching or had back pain. Most kids knew exactly what it meant and it made me easier to finish my speech. I was also able to pass out flyers so the kids could go back home and mention it to their parents. The start of this was very terrifying, even more terrifying than my little sister. Actually, not that much. <laughs> In the beginning, my anxiety and fears caught up with me and I made a promise to myself that I would not get too stressed and I would stay on task. But we had a change of plans early on. It took me longer to decide on a project, and it was too close to family time. Coach seems to remind me as much as possible, thank you coach, to get it done. The usual was yeah, yeah. I told her it was completed, but it was not. When I think back, I believe it was seconds before family time that my decision was made. At first try, I received a green light, and I was thrilled. Now it's up to me to begin my project, a topic that would be a little more closer to home. While most people procrastinate, fortunately, I went on vacation. When I got back home from vacation, which is beautiful, I put everything I had into making sure this project was a success. I talked to the lower grades as to what my project was all about. I created flyers to pass out to classes and tape on walls. Of course, everything five feet away. On the flyers, I put some basic information about scoliosis. I also added what would be my second goal, which was to collect new coloring books to Boston Children's Hospital for the other grades. As the weeks went on, I kept checking the boxes I had placed in the hallways to make sure people were donating. Every few weeks, the boxes would receive a few books. I started to worry as the due date for this goal approached. Weeks went by, and all I could think about was how embarrassing it's going to be when I go to the hospital with only 14 colored books. But to my surprise, one week before Halloween, I went down to collect the books, and they were full. I was shocked to be informed that not only did students bring in books, but teachers did too. In November, I took another trip down to Boston with my family to deliver the books. I now had collected over 40 coloring books. Now I could breathe. I was able to complete other work for my capsule project, such as slideshows and this great speech. That throughout the entire project, I've learned that it is vital to put others before you and to be more organized, especially if you're going on vacation. If I have one more thing to say to the future eighth graders, and don't worry because you're going to be hearing this a lot, do not wait till last minute to put things together. Ms. Kovacs loved the word procrastination. When you think of capstone, your heart may beat a thousand times a minute, and you may think it's not really important that you just want a good grade. The answer is no. The process has proved me wrong in many ways. I hope to continue this by donating as many books books as possible at Boston Children Hospital. A very special thanks to my entire family for supporting me, listening to me, and driving me all over to get this completed. Coach Simpson for nagging me to do more burpees if I did not finish each step. And Ms. McGar for helping me out and letting me know that it'll all be fine. Friends here at school, and you know who you are, and all who donated to my cause. Everyone who sat here and by this point is most likely sore. And lastly, Mr. Connor and Ms. Onowski for giving me a green light and this opportunity. Adios. Wow, Emily, you have a nice little sense of humor. <laughs> You've been hiding that. But I enjoyed it. That was a good job. Next up is Maya Santaran. Good morning, students, parents, and faculty. My name is Maya Santaran, and for my capstone project, I chose the topic of local childhood hunger and homelessness. There are nearly 13 million children in America who face some sort of hunger. This is about one in six children who worry about eating enough for don't know when the next meal will be. Over 2.5 million children are homeless in America every year. Homeless families can live in cars, abandoned buildings, and shelters. I chose to work with two organizations. The first was an organization called Blessings in America. This was located in Brockton, Massachusetts. In Brockton, some students are on a meal plan during school but go home over the weekends to no food. Blessings in a Backpack packs food and sends the children home with meals and snacks. The second organization I worked with was the Medway House. The Medway House is a homeless shelter for families with children. 
Over the past year, the Medley House has sheltered over 49 families. I chose to work with these organizations because my childhood me memories consisted of no struggles at all, and I wanted other children to feel the same way. When we first had to choose a capstone project, my mind was full of ideas. I knew I wanted to work with children and that I would rather go out and volunteer rather than collect money or donations. After deciding on my topic of childhood hunger or homelessness, I got to researching organizations. I had only wanted to work with one organization, um, Blessings in the Backpack. However, I, I changed my mind when I realized that working with two organizations could allow me to volunteer for both goals and both causes. The Medway House was brought to my atten attention through an old babysitter at Family Park, Joanne. She used to work at the Medway House and knew it would be a good fit for me. After helping me get in contact, I set the goals for my capstone project. Lessons in a Backpack helps packing events where volunteers would gather together to pack bags with food to last students' weekends and holidays. My first goal was to attend two of these events. My second goal was to volunteer for a total of eight hours with the children living at the Medway House. My final goal was to educate the young community at the SCCPS about local childhood hunger by reading Maddie's Fridge by Lewis Brandt. After presenting my ideas to the panel, I received a green light and was ready to proceed with my project. I attended the events with BIAB in April and May. During the sessions, over 200 bags were filled and sent to the Brockton Public Schools. The events were held at the Brockton High School. I met some very nice people while packing who had been volunteering for many years and had many stories to tell about the things the organization had accomplished. I completed the goal before the school year had ended, which helped me decide how to spread out the rest of my goals. I decided to finish my second over the summer and my third during the beginning of eighth grade. I volunteered at the Medway House for two hours every Thursday in July, which was a total of eight hours meeting my goal. <laughs> Volunteering helped me meet so many new people and was a new experience that not only raised my awareness, but helped me feel affected. I knew I was impacting the lives of children even in a small way. I worked with kids aged five and under. Each child had unique personalities and different interests. This helped me gain a better understanding of how children in homeless shelters live and play together. There were about 10 to 15 kids living there. They had one room with toys and a small playground for playing outside. It was very different from what I had experienced, but each child's face lit up when a volunteer came to play with them. This helped me understand that although they didn't have perfect lives, they were grateful for what they did have. <laughs> My final goal was to educate the community at the STCPS about local childhood hunger. It took me a while to decide what grade to agree to, and emailing was a bit harder than I expected. Through this goal, I wanted to work on my communication skills. <coughs> I believe that I explained the purpose of my project and addressed dates and information clearly. I ended up reading to Mrs. Dorsey's homeroom and had the students answer questions about what they had understood. Each child seemed to have a good understanding of childhood hunger. I was lucky enough to not have many obstacles. The main obstacle I faced was picking a date or class to reach in. I was able, able to overcome this obstacle by eventually changing the class I read to. Another obstacle I faced was scheduling volunteering times, but it was worked out through the phone. Procrastination was also a problem throughout the emailing process, and I ended up sending some emails late. To the seventh graders working on their capstone projects currently, I want to remind you not to stress too much about the process. It may seem like a lot now, but it's not as bad as it looks as long as you pick something you know you will look forward to doing. And although you've made this a million times, don't procrastinate. If you end up procrastinating, don't worry about it. Everything works out in the end. I would like to thank Megan Schoenberg, the director of Blessings in a Backpack, Heidi Sia, the woman I got in contact with at the Medway House, Miss Joanne, who helped me with the Medway House, Mrs. Dorsey, who let me read to her class, Coach Simpson and my advising group for supporting me throughout the entire process, my parents for dropping me places and helping me with my goals, and finally, you all for listening. Nice job, Maya. I particularly enjoyed the um, slideshow with the little hurdles being the PE teacher. That was nice. Nice touch. Next up, um, to tell you about his experience, is Jonathan Evan Chapman. Good morning. Students, faculty, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and special guests of BFCCPS. My name is Jonathan Edinger, and for my capstone project, I worked on raising awareness about how the honeybee population is decreasing. Did you know that 80% of our fruits and vegetables were pollinated by honeybees? In addition, one in every three bites of food that you eat was produced with the help of pollination. Since 2006, honeybees have been disappearing and dying at alarmingly fast rates. 
Beekeepers in the U.S. lost 33% of their bees between April 2016 and April 2017. This is a very big problem in all countries, and we need to work together to stop it. What inspired me to do this project was a 2007 60 Minutes episode that my dad showed me. It talked about how important honeybees are to society and how diseases were killing them off. I wanted to do something about this, so I decided to do my capstone project on raising awareness of the dec decline of honeybees. There are three main reasons why honeybees are in danger. First is colony collapse disorder, or CCD. This is a disease that causes worker bees and drones to forget where their hive is. As a result, the queen bee does not get any food or nutrients from outside and will eventually die. The second reason is infestation by mites. Mites are similar to ticks and, will and can transmit diseases to the bees. The last reason is pesticide use, which is generally used to control problem insects but ends up harming the pollinators and other insects that help them. My capsule process started off very well. I got a green light after meeting with Coach Simpson and Mrs. Zolnowski and emailed three different beekeeping organizations. I chose the Norfolk County Beekeepers Association to be my contact organization. My goals were to one, learn to better communicate with adults by setting up my capsule project, two, raise awareness about the problems facing honeybees, and three, get people involved in helping honeybees. I completed my first goal by talking to Coach Simpson and Ms. Skolnowski about my capstone project I did. I also attended a Norfolk County Beekeepers Association meeting where I met Susan Robinson, who agreed to come in and educate students about the importance of honeybees. I completed my second goal by coordinating with Susan, Mr. Perna, and Ms. Skolnowski to set up an assembly for kindergarten to second graders where Susan gave a beekeeping demonstration. I also handed up flyers, which had information on what people can do to help the bees, and it included a packet of wildflower seeds. For my third goal, I organized an activity with the first years to make seed balls, which you throw in your yard to encourage wildflower growth. To cover the cost of the assembly, activity, and seeds for the flyers, I raised $150 by recycling cans and bottles. My main obstacle was procrastination. One original plan for my project was to plant a bee-friendly garden at the Franklin Community Garden. However, I did not manage my time wisely and was unable to get a plot. In addition, I planned to go to the Norfolk County Beekeepers Association meeting in February, but I did not make it. I overcame these obstacles by helping my mom in her garden in the spring, deadheading flowers, and going to one of the Norfolk County Beekeepers Association meetings in March instead. The result of my project was very positive, with me being able to hand out flyers to every class in the school and, got, and get students, especially the ones in the assembly, engaged in the project. A huge thanks to Susan Robinson for being able to come and talk at the assembly and for being a great contact, my advisor, Coach Simpson, and my advising group for being supportive and helpful during advising, my mom and dad for helping me set up the assembly and the seed ball activity, Mr. Schwab and Mr. Mercury for helping with the assembly, Mrs. Lonowski for giving the green light, me the green light, and both Mr. Perna and her for always responding to my emails quickly. Lastly, thanks to all of you for listening to not only mine, but everyone else's presentation today. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Jonathan. That was awesome. And I look forward to um, planting my wildflower seeds. I saved that packet. I'm looking forward to springtime. Next up, um, Joseph De Niro. These terrorist groups had torn through the Middle East, leaving lots of devastation. 
I remember the fear I felt as I saw people standing on a mountain begging for help and families in small boats that were overcrowded. They were all just trying to find a safe place. I later learned that many countries were not accepting refugees and other countries did not have the resources to help all these people in need. When I learned that I would be doing this capsule service project for school, I knew immediately what I wanted to help, those refugees who had lost everything they had and came to our country for a war. I was able to put myself in their shoes and imagine what they had gone through. That is why I chose this project. Initially, I had hoped to incorporate my favorite activity with a fundraising event. I loved basketball or thought it would be a fun activity to bring the Wizards for a fun game between parents and teachers and the Wizards at the ACCPS. However, after many telephone calls and discussions with Wizards staff, I realized that I would be unable to come up with a down payment and a gym for the project. Next, I tried to obtain a speaker to come to our school. Many of those involving, involved in helping refugees were overwhelmed with speaking engagements and the ACCPS was too far for them to travel. Finally, I decided that it would be the best for me to do three things. I would run a donation drive at school, I would run a donation drive on social media, and I would volunteer my time helping refugees resettle in Massachusetts. My donation drive was very successful. I was able to get a bed, kitchen table, many small appliances and lamps, pots and pans, clothes, toys, cleaning supplies, school supplies, backpacks, and personal items for the families. That was a great accomplishment, and the families were so grateful when I arrived with them. The most amazing part of my capstone project was meeting the families and spending time with them. My project involved preparing apartments for the arrival of families and spending time with them and helping them just to work in the kitchen. First, the apartments in Worcester were very gross. The first one I held was Clean, smell like smoke and trash. While we painted, it was almost 90 degrees with the help air conditioning. The dad who was moving into the home had just arrived the day before from Iraq after losing everything, including his home, due to bombs during the war. He was a police officer in the Iraq army. He was painting with me. He did not speak English very well, but we had fun together and found ways to communicate. We are still friends to this day. The family from Iraq is one family that has become close to my family. We visit them in Worcester whenever we can. I played a lot of tag with the little kids. It was a lot of fun, and I spent a lot of time with them. There are other families we held from Africa and Afghanistan, but this one family had a special place in my life. drive my post on social media. I also made a flyer that provided some facts about refugees. People who were interested asked a lot of questions, and I enjoyed telling them the process about how people were screened to come to our country and what kind of supports they received until they were able to be independent. My supervisor, Derek, who was the manager of the Refugee Immigration Center, was a refugee himself five years ago from Africa. He is one of the most intelligent, hardworking, and caring men I have ever met. We have a lot in common because he loves basketball and plays music. We have gotten close as well. I plan to continue my work at Rack with Derek as long as I can, because it means a lot to me. I have learned so much about other countries, government policy, bending of refugees, different cultural practices, even political parties and so on. Most importantly, I learned how privileged I am and how difficult other people's lives can be. I am grateful to be able to be a for encouraging me to do something I believe in. Thank you.
morning students, parents, and faculty of BSCCPS. My name is Liam Concan, and today I would like to tell you about my capstone project. For my project, I work with an organization called Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels delivers balanced meals to people who cannot get out of their own homes or struggle to make their own food. The meals they serve are part of a balanced diet, helping them stay healthy. Their goal is to help people who struggle to get the necessary dietary help they need. I volunteered in the kitchen preparing meals and also delivered meals with the help of my mom. I had to do all my volunteering over the summer because they only deliver on weekdays when I would typically be in school. The experience was great. During my capstone, I had some problems and obstacles. The first one was procrastination. It took a long time for me to start working on my project and getting in touch with the director was challenging. Second, it was also difficult to find dates that worked for my schedule and worked openings in their schedule. My final obstacle was parental support because I need my mom to help me drive me to the kitchen and make sure we could find dates that also work for her to deliver. Fortunately, the scheduling worked out for me and we were able to fill in for someone on Thursdays over the summer. The Meals on Wheels is located right next to our school in the basement of the Federated Church here in Franklin. They deliver meals to Medway, Bellingham, and Franklin. I volunteered for three days in the kitchen. On average, they prepare between 80 and 100 meals a day for delivery. Each person who receives a meal gets a hot meal, which has protein, starch, and vegetables. In addition, each person also gets a milk, a bread, and dessert, which is typically free. Some days, they have over 100 clients. Preparing the hot meals for delivery, the volunteers make an assembly line, scooping the food into trays, sealing them tight, and putting them in warm coolers for delivery. After the meals are sent out for delivery, we help clean up the trays in the kitchen and the tables. After we had a couple days in the kitchen, we started delivering meals to the clients. We delivered meals to five different days for delivery. One of the most important parts for delivering the meals is you make sure you have the right number of meals for the number of clients on your list. After we checked we had the right number of meals, and cold bags, which consisted of the milk, bread, and dessert, we could start our route. When we got to a client's home, I could grab a hot meal and the cold bag and go to the door. Sometimes I would just ring the doorbell and the bell, and they would walk right up and take the meal. But other times, because the clients are less mobile, you have to go ring the bell and walk in and deliver the meal to them. One of the most important parts of delivering the meals was checking on the clients to make sure that they were okay. Sadly, some days, you're the only person they see and it's your job to make sure they're okay and they're not sick. Delivery per day would take about two hours to complete. That was one of the shortest routes they had. In total, I volunteered for eight days, which came to a total of 18 hours, and I enjoyed every second. You guys may not remember, but when you were in kindergarten, we made cards for people who received the meals from Meals on Meals. That left a mark on me and helped inspire me to get involved. Meeting these people was just amazing, and that is why I wanted to be one of my goals. I met over 70 people, and they were all amazing. My final goal is I wanted to inspire the third and fourth graders to help out. So I talked to them about how they could help, how they could volunteer at Meals on Meals. I spoke to them during a gym class about my experience and how they could help. I'm hoping that some of them go and help the Meals on Meals organization when they get older. I would like to thank my mom, my dad, and my brother for helping me with ideas, helping me get from one place to the other. Ms. Newen from Meals on Wheels for allowing me to go and work with their amazing organization. My advisor, Coach Simpson, for helping me through the capstone process. My advising group for helping me with ideas and more. Mr. Peter, Ms. Lonowski, and Mr. Perna for always being there to help me if I need anything and making the process go smoothly. And I would like to thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the presentations and the rest of your day. Thank you, Liam. The red title is awesome. <laughs> Next, last of a dynasty, but not the least, I'd like to introduce Lily Craig. Good morning, students, faculty, and parents of BSCCPS. My name is Lily Craig. And for my capstone project, I had the honor of working with an organization called Celiac Kids Connection. Celiac Kids Connection is an organization and support group for those diagnosed with celiac disease. People diagnosed with celiac have an autoimmune disease, 
that causes their villi in the small intestine to be underactive and to react when gluten, such as wheat, rye, barley, and malt, are consumed. The Celiac Kids Connection works with kids and patients at Boston Children's Hospital to provide support for those new to celiac. <coughs> I chose this project because when I was two years old, I was diagnosed with celiac disease. And although it has been a huge difficulty for me, it has given me the opportunity to help others with the disease. The Celiac Kids Connection has also helped my family when my older sister and I were first diagnosed. Ever since I first heard about the capstone process, I contemplated what I might do to better the community. My sister Sophie inspired me to use celiac disease as a positive experience and use capstone as an outlet to help others. After extensive research into celiac kids connection, I started planning my project out and creating my goals. <coughs> After receiving the green light, I did more research into ways I could volunteer for the Celiac Kids Connection. As the current 7th graders will soon find out, goals at the beginning of the summer may not be the same as when you finish your project. For my first goal, I had originally planned to volunteer around 8 hours at Celiac Kids Connection events. But finding out that there were very few opportunities, I had to change my plan. I got in contact with Francie Kelly, the director of Celiac Kids Connection, and in October, we organized a support group for teens with celiac disease at Twist, a gluten-free bakery in Millis. Two girls and I talked about our experiences with celiac disease and how we coped with school events and parties where there were no viable options for us. I am proud to say that I've continued this goal and have held three other support group meetings since then. For my second goal, as many of you know, I held an assembly for the 6th through 8th grade that Francie Kelly spoke at to spread awareness about celiac disease and what it is. My third goal was my personal goal, to stay organized throughout the project in order to stay in contact with Francie Kelly and to keep my project on track. I did this with the help of a calendar and a weekly journal. Luckily, I did not face any major obstacles during my capstone project, but like every project, there were some challenges. The biggest obstacle I faced was when I had to change my first goal because there were less available volunteer opportunities than I had previously planned on attending. I overcame this by getting in contact with Francie Kelly and changing my first goal to create a support group for teen girls with celiac disease. My second goal was that in the, my second obstacle was that in the middle of my correspondence with Francie Kelly, her email changed and we lost our connection. I overcame this by getting back in contact with Francie at the assembly and getting the correct email. Capstone has taught me to be more independent and not to only rely on myself, but to ask for help if I needed it. It was an important experience that changed the way I looked at life, and it taught me that even a bad situation can be turned around to help others who are going through a similar experience. To the seventh graders starting their projects, I know you hear it every year, but the most important thing to remember is not to procrastinate, because if you do, you'll be very stressed when you finish the project. You will learn discipline and independence from this project. Helping your community for the better is an honor. You should do Capstone with pride. I would like to thank many people for helping me with this project. I would firstly like to thank my sister Sophie for encouraging me to use my experiences to help those around me. My parents for supporting me throughout this process, especially my mother who always wanted really to support her. My advisors, Mrs. McGarrow and Ms. Daniel for helping me through the first part of my project and my wonderful advisor, Coach Simpson, for helping me throughout the rest. Thank you to my advisors, my advising group for supporting my project. I would like to thank the local bakery twist that I held my support group back. Thank you also to Mr. Perna and Mrs. Zolnowski for encouraging the 7th and 8th graders to help our communities. Finally, I would like to thank my correspondent, Francie Kelly, for coming to our school and helping me put together my support group. And finally, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Lily. That was amazing. And next up is Rainy Promote. of BFCCPS. My name is Rami Pramod, and for my capstone project, I had the privilege of working with the Greater Boston Food Bank and Feed My Starving Children. Both organizations deal with hunger, both locally and globally. I chose this topic because hunger is something I witness every year when I travel to India, and I wanted to change the amount of people I see on the streets begging for something to eat every day. 
My first two goals were to have two fundraisers, one here at Charter and one at my church. On October 13, 2017, I held a movie night at Charter with the help of my friends Sophia and Mia, presenting Somewhere to the Lost Village. And although I did not quite reach my goal for $200, raising $185, I was so happy with the money I acquired. My second goal was to have another fundraiser at my church by selling bracelets for $1 and necklaces at $1.50. My goal was to raise $50, and I surpassed this by raising $75. I had hoped to raise, with both of these fundraisers combined, $250 in total, and in the end, I ended up raising $219. <coughs> and I am happy with the number of families this money can help feed. These fundraisers also helped me to educate my community about hunger and how they can help end it. My third goal was to volunteer at, for at least five hours at both of my organizations. On June 5th, from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m., I volunteered at the Greater Boston Food Bank along with my mom, along with some other girls from our private school. Together, there are about 10 of us. There, I packaged foods such as cereal, oats, and whole grain food to send to people throughout Massachusetts. These packages are given to the kids on Fridays to be taken home for the weekend and for the rest of the following week so the family can be kept fed. On August 12th, from 10 a.m. to 1.10 p.m., I volunteered at Feed My Starving Children with my church and other people that had also signed up for the issue. In all, there are more than 75 people there working together to end hunger. Side by side, we packed over 260 boxes full of nutrients, vitamins, soy, and rice. These boxes were then sent to Africa during a September last year, and through the various locations the boxes were sent to, workers distributed the food to the people that needed it in Africa. I surpassed my goal, third goal by volunteering for five hours and ten minutes. My last goal was to be able to get over my fear of public speaking. I've accomplished this goal, if not completely. Although I still get frightened at the thought of speaking in front of a crowd, I have gotten better at it. At my movie night, I had to speak in front of everyone to get their attention. At my church, whether they knew it or not, they helped me get over my fear because I was told to give a speech. Both of these situations helped me to get over my fear. Some obstacles I encountered were procrastination and my fear of public speaking. I'm an extremely big procrastinator, so I kept on putting off different things for capstone. My original date for the bracelet and necklace sale was May 6th, but I had last minute plans so I had to cancel. Eventually, I set the date for November 4th and 5th. My movie night was originally set for June 9th at the end of my 7th grade year, but I pushed it back to October and eventually held it October 13th. Public speaking put me off because I was sometimes scared to speak to some people, and that prevented me from telling them about hunger and educating them about my project. I eventually overcame both of my obstacles by telling myself that if I kept on putting off different goals for later and later in the year, I would become stressed and that eventually convinced me to finally put some time to finalize everything for Capstone. Throughout this process, I learned quite a few things about myself. I learned that if I choose to, I can be quite determined to complete a goal or a task I've set out for myself. I also learned that I'm a bigger procrastinator than I had originally thought, but my determination to complete my goals helps to cancel that out. There are so many people I have to thank for helping me throughout Capstone. Thank you to my parents for driving me around, helping me complete my goals, and donating to all of my fundraisers. My church for the donations and volunteering with me at Feed My Starving Children. Erin Delawi and Maya and Bryce at the Greater Boston Food Bank for helping me get volunteer time and staying in contact with me. Everyone that came to my movie night, I'm so grateful for all of your support, both to the parents and the kids. Thank you to Mr. Peter, Mrs. Olnowski, my mom, and my dad, because without your help, I would not have been able to start the movie. Mia and Sophia FR, who helped me run the movie night as smoothly as possible. Mr. Peter, Mrs. Olnowski, and Mr. Perna, for helping me with organizing everything that I needed and helping me whenever I needed it. My advising group and Coach Simpson for helping me throughout the entire process from the beginning to the end. Last but not least, thank you all for listening.
at least the 18th or 19th time this morning. Um, I'm James McSweeney, the 7th and 8th grade history teacher here at BOCCPS. And today it is my undeniable honor, undeniable honor, to introduce my advising group. Justin, Paige, Abhishek, Avita, Zach, Kelly, and Ethan have each accomplished wonderful things and will be outlining their challenges, successes, obstacles, and triumphs. I am still relatively new to the school, so this is my first time seeing this journey unfold from start to finish. Um, I'm struggling to put into words how proud I am of my group. The growth, the maturity, and the impacts they have made on local, national, and global issues throughout this project is something that we all, as a community, should be proud of. But if I know my advisees like I think I do, their accomplishments and their generosity certainly won't end here. Please listen to each of their stories and let these young men and women inspire you as they have inspired me. Without any further delay, please welcome the first presenter from my group, Justin Munya, who chose to support the Be Like Brit Foundation. students, faculty, and, and parents of Benjamin Franklin Post Charter School. My name is Justin Munya, and today I present to you my capstone speech. For my capstone project, I chose to work with orphans. The reason why I chose to work with orphans is because I felt like orphans were overlooked in today's society. Now that that part of my project was over, I had to decide on the organization that I work with. Even though this part of my project did not take me too long, it came to the following questions. Would this organization be reliable to my project? Would this organization really want to help me? With a lot of thinking and research, I chose to work with Be Like Grit. Be Like Grit is an organization that started back when the earthquake struck in Haiti. A, good, a girl named Brittany went to Haiti on a mission trip. While she was there, she told her mom she wanted to build, she wanted to build an orphanage in Haiti. Soon after, soon after, the devastating earthquake struck the island and killed Brittany and thousands of others. Her parents then decided to build an orphanage, orphanage in her name, and they named it Be Like Brit. They adopted 33 boys and 33 girls, symbolizing the days she was stuck under the rubble of her hotel. Be Like Brit is an amazing organization that helped me throughout my counseling process. I helped this charity in many different ways, two in particular, such as holding a fundraiser, making a drive, and for my third goal of my counseling project was to improve my goal speaking. These three goals would be cornerstones for my project. For my first goal, I made a drive so I could receive items and give them back to the group to the people that needed them more than I did. For this goal, I organized a week in school for me to receive items. I set a box inside of a trophy case area, and people brought items down there, and I collected them at the end of the week. My goal for this part of my project was to get about 10 items. I surpassed this by getting 29 items from Soap's Valley T-shirts. This goal was a major success. For my second goal, I focused on getting items that for that reason, I chose to hold a fundraiser. If I had a fundraiser, I would find a restaurant and would organize a day that I could hold my fundraiser. Even though, this, even though I did not reach my goal on $150, my coordinator said that it would fine reach the amount of items that I collected. For my third goal, my personal goal, I chose to work on my public speaking. I chose a different speech from a famous person, such as Martin Luther King Jr., JFK and many other people you may be familiar with. Every once in a while, I read it to myself. My goal for this was to improve my public speaking so I could have a clearer voice in front of you as an audience. All these three goals were an amazing help to our cause, to our project. Even though it may seem as I got to these easily, I did not. For my first goal of my poetry drive, the dates I had chosen were set back due to another student saying on the same, on the same days as I did. For my second goal of, high, of holding a fundraiser, I had not wish I had a few dollars, and I cannot think of an alternative to replace, to replace that. For my last goal of public speaking, I did not get as much practice as I had planned, but as you can see, I overcame all these as I am here today. I'm not going to lie, Capsule was a long and tiring process, but I learned through it that I can accomplish anything that I put my mind to it, and I can, and I thank you for that. And note to the upcoming eighth graders, Capsule is a very long process. Don't make it harder by complaining. Have trying to have fun with it. And at that note, I'd like to thank my mom and dad for supporting me throughout this process. My oldest sister for helping me for helping me with my speaking skills. My advisor, Miss McSweeney. 
my advice is for being there for me, to be people who to my drive, and finally you for listening to my speech.
Um, now I would like to, or please welcome Abhishek Raja, who's going to come and talk about his contributions to the Sewa International Foundation. Bonjour, salve, ni hao, hola, namaste, konnichiwa, guten tag, and hello BFGCPS. My name is Abhishek Raja, and from my capstone project, I chose to help people in poverty. When looking through organizations, Sewa International really popped out at me. They're a non-profit service organization that globally undertakes disaster rescue and cooks and feeds for poor. They have helped people in Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and disasters around the world. I chose this particular organization because I really wanted to help those who are struggling with basic needs in life, like food and shelter, as Sewa International helps those people. I also used to think about those who were impacted by um, natural disasters, and I would see these on the news. These disasters might have taken their homes, belongings, and even the lives of their loved ones. It touched me as Sewa International worked to help fix these problems. So without a doubt, I chose Sewa International as my organization. My first step in aiding my organization was to volunteer at least 10 to 15 hours of my time. Here, I cooked food and served the poor as they came in. Seeing the happy faces of the people coming in to have a meal made me realize how many people in our local community were struggling to get a meal and how privileged we are to have three meals a day and snacks in between. It felt good to give back to these people. My second goal was to raise $100 and receive five bags of food to give to my organization. Lastly, for my third and personal goal, I wanted to improve my public speaking and how I reached out to my organization. During my capstone experience, like many of my fellow incubators, I ran into some obstacles. One obstacle I ran into is that my point of contact was unable to measure my progress from my personal goal. This set me back a little, so I had to ask my parents to monitor me more carefully. Another obstacle I encountered is that I went to India over the summer for more than a month. To catch up on what I missed, I persevered extra hard to get things done. This also led to another problem, because I was planning to run a sports session after school started. This did not work out because I could not find a time that worked for my parents and I, and I also realized that the participants may not be able to make it to all the sessions after school. This was an easy fix as I held a one-day pin down tournament, which turned out to be a huge success. One last obstacle I ran into is that when going around my neighborhood for my donation time, not many of my neighbors seemed interested in participating. As a result, I thought I was fall short of my goal. To overcome this, I asked some of my close friends for donations, which helped me reach my goal. With this said, I also accomplished a lot during the course of the project. I exceeded my first and original goal of 15 hours by volunteering a total of 20 hours to cook and food and serve the poor. I completed my second goal by holding a pin-down tournament to raise some money and a food drive in my neighborhood. <coughs> I exceeded my goal by raising $175 off of my pin-down tournament and also another $30 off of other donations for a total of $205, which is more than double my original goal of $100. I also collected five bags of food during the food drive I held in my neighborhood. With this, I also received five bags of food from friends for a total of 10 bags of food. I surpassed my original goal of five bags of food. For my third and personal goal, I kept track of how I spoke throughout my project. I, I rated myself on a scale from one to 10, and with some practice and help from my parents, I got my low, low rating up to nines and tens near the end of the project. Before ending my speech, I'd like to thank some people. First, I would like to thank Mr. McSimini, my advisor, for everything he has done to help me succeed in my project and by giving me ideas and making sure I was on task. I would also like to thank Mrs. L's advisory group and my advisees for their support. I would like to thank everyone who participated in my pin down tournament and Jonathan Evanshuk, Liam Conkinen, and the GTR Biswas for helping my pin down tournament run smoothly. I'd like to thank Mrs. Kovacs for giving me the idea to run the tournament, Mrs. Solnowski for giving me the green light to continue my project, Dan, my point of contact, and Sewa International, my parents who helped guide me through my project and gave suggestions whenever I was stuck. And finally, I would like my, to end my speech with a quote from Vince Lombardi. The difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but a rather a lack of will. Thank you everyone for listening and best of luck for the upcoming day creators and everyone presenting. Have a nice day. Thank you, Abhishek. Another fantastic job. Uh, next
Next, we will hear from Anvita Madunti, who will explain her partnership with the Spandana organization. Good morning, students, parents, faculty, and staff of the SCPS. My name is Anvita Madunti, and from my past, I'm part of the Arabic Spandana organization. When we began this project, it took me a while to figure out who I wanted to work with. But ever since I sat here in fifth grade, I always knew I wanted to work with people who were less fortunate than us. The three organizations that I initially picked to work with before I narrowed it down to one was the work of children who were not here, children who were blind, and my last organization, being the one I chose to work with, focused on kids that have disabilities. As some of you may be able to tell from that, I am very passionate to work with kids, so when I picked working with my organization, I was happy that I did. The Spandau Organization is a school that works with disabled children, children with no specific disability. Along with these kids, they help provide financial aid to many people that lost it. This organization ended up being the one I chose since my family knew the founder of this nonprofit organization. The second thing that drew me to them was that their secondary goal and focus is for orphans or single parented children. After I had pulled my organization, I had to figure out how I wanted to help them in specific. When I had finally picked my three goals, I was pleased with what I had chosen. My first goal was to raise money for them, which I was able to do by hosting a movie night at Abby A. from Mrs. Ellsberg, as we showed beauty in the least. I set my goal for how much money I would like to raise to $75, not knowing how many people would be able to continue. I am very happy to say that I was able to exceed my goal of $75 and ended up giving my cause $300, but only $80 made from the movie night and the rest gave from family donations. My second goal is to make cards, and my lastly, my third goal is to work on my self-confidence and public speaking. Since I began this project, I was able to inform many about my cause, and, got, and one way I was able to do this was before my movie night. Before the movie had started, Abby and I both went up and told everyone that I was able to attend a little about our projects. Another way I was able to educate people was when we presented our Step 6 or Advice games. And the most important way I was able to do this and tell people about my topic is right now to all of you. As with any capstone project, there are always obstacles. Fortunately with mine, they were easy to fix. My first obstacle was towards the very beginning of this project. When I first emailed my organization, it took them a while to respond back, but they eventually did. Another obstacle I had was getting a yellow light. This was also easily fixed when I just went back and changed my action plan. One of my biggest obstacles was caused because of one of my goals, and it's to make cards. There are around 50 children staying there, many of them older than I had originally known. As I thought about how they don't care about the cards, I decided to send one along with them. Another obstacle that came with the cards is not knowing when I'd be able to send them, since it cost money to have to be My original plan was to send them during my eighth grade summer, since it would be the easiest time for them to be sent, but that's not supposed to be done by November. I fixed this by just sending them before the deadline. My next obstacle that I faced was when Abby and I originally wanted to finish raising money before our seventh grade year had ended. Since, but the date that we had originally picked, there were many things happening during that month, and we were unfortunately not able to do it that day. We had filled out our blue sheet in May, and our first date that we picked was June second. But after checking the school calendar, we saw the field day and the archer were both planned on the same day. So instead, we decided to do it after the ice cream social during our eighth grade year on September 5th. I was able to get many positive results and I learned a lot about not only my cause but about myself. So on my positive results that I was able to have for my project was that I was able to give my organization $300 helping the children there. I was able to keep, educate many about my topic and got much better with public speaking. I was able to learn a lot, of, I was able to learn a lot and improve on many things. One of the being that when there's a short amount of time to get things done, I should not be waiting until the last minute. And finally, I'd like to thank a few people. First, I'd like to thank my advisor, Mr. Mixini, Mr. 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 for making sure I was getting things done on time and for helping me when I needed it. Next, I'd like to thank my advisor, Mr. Blum, and Mrs. Ellen, for advising you for giving my ideas on how I can do and helping me throughout this whole process. I'd like to thank Abby Allen for doing the movie night with me, along with Kelly Lucia for writing this movie. Everyone that is able to come to our movie night, and everyone that helped advertise it. I'd like to thank Julie White, Tony Zanowski, and Luigi Marino for giving me the idea for my second goal and helping me complete it. My parents and my sister for giving me the idea to work with my organization and helping me with everything. 
And finally, I want to thank everyone here for listening and wish you good luck to the upcoming new graders on their campus. to describe how he supported kids with food allergies. Good morning, students, parents, and faculty of the BFCCPS. My name is Zachary Sims, and for my capstone project, I raised awareness of children's food allergies and worked with the organization KFA Kids with Food Allergies. Food allergies impact many people around the world and can restrict a variety of foods from a person's diet. I personally have food allergies and chose to focus specifically on raising awareness of children's food allergies because I want all children to be more cautious when sharing food with friends and to be more aware of how food allergies impact others. I made myself goals that attract and complete a family project. My first goal was to successfully spread awareness about children's food allergies. My second goal was to make over $75 with a teal bracelet sale that I held and to donate this money to pay a vet. My third and final goal was to be less of a procrastinator and to get assignments done on time, done well, and to plan things out in a timely manner. I educated others about food allergies by holding a teal bracelet sale in October at school, at my school practices, and at the farmer's market on the Franklin Common to raise money for KFA and to raise awareness about food allergies. I posted flyers around the school to publicize my sale and to share facts about food allergies. I chose to sell teal bracelets because teal is the color associated with food allergy awareness, and I chose October because I want children and parents to consider allergies before buying Halloween candy. I raised $208 with the sale, and all of the proceeds went directly to KFA. I also read a book about a boy with food allergies and how he coped with them to grades 1 and 2. The title of the book is Food Allergies and Me by Jimmy Skinner. I carved a teal pumpkin for Halloween rather than a normal pumpkin. The Teal Pumpkin identifies my house as an allergy-friendly home for trigger treaters and come get safe options. I encountered obstacles like any other student, and I overcame them with much time and effort. One obstacle I faced was that I was away this past summer at Seaboy Camp, so I was unable to complete any step while I was gone. I overcame this by working hard without procrastinating to get back on track with my project when I returned home after camp. Another obstacle that I faced was finding an additional way to spread awareness among the other students. This became very stressful for me. I resolved this by choosing to read the book to the other students, and they found it to be both informational and enjoyable. Some positive outcomes of my project were that I almost tripled my monetary goal. My original goal was $75, yet I made $208. I also became much less of a procrastinator, which was my personal goal. I posted a calendar in my room, which helped me plan out the tests and quizzes work, as well as when assignments were due for caption and other subjects. This helped me get ahead of my work rather than waiting to the last minute to get assignments done. I learned a lot from this project. First, I was successful at spreading awareness of food allergies to my community, and because of that, I made a difference. I also learned that I have the ability to share an important message with my community, and that is to think twice before giving someone food without asking if they have an allergy. There were many people that helped me during my project, and I would like to thank them for their help. First, I would like to thank my parents for supporting me, guiding me, and for helping me get through this project by doing my very best. I thank my sister Jess as well for helping me and giving me ideas of what to do for my project, as she has also gone through the capstone process. Thank you to Mr. McSweeney, my advisor, for helping me and guiding me the right way to successfully complete my project. Thank you to my advisees, as well as Mrs. Zell and her advising group, for supporting my capstone and for helping me whenever I struggled. I'd like to thank Mrs. Solnowski for giving me the green light to develop my project and for great ideas. I also wish to thank the first and second grade teachers for allowing me to read to their students. Thank you to Cynthia Garbowski from the Franklin Farmers Market for letting me sell bracelets. A big thank you to Allison and Sarah, Aline Taylor, and Tanya Bumgarner for sharing information about KFA and for advice and ideas for my capstone. A special thank you to everyone who supported me in KFA by purchasing a bracelet. Finally, I would like to end with a quote. Success is the result of perfection, hard work, learning from failure, loyalty, and persistence. Call me out. Thank you everyone for listening, and I wish the best of luck to my fellow 8th grade classmates.
great job. Uh, please welcome Kelly Musa, who chose to support Mass Vesta Dog as her organization. Hello, students, parents, and faculty of BFCCPS. My name is Kelly Musa, and for my capstone project, I chose to work with Massachusetts Vesta Dog. My organization helped provide bulletproof vests, essential equipment, and training for police dogs all across Massachusetts. I chose to work with my organization because police dogs constantly help keep our community safe and protected. Many of the dogs don't get the recognition or support that they need and deserve. I've always loved police dogs and the work that they do. I thought that they were the coolest thing. A few years ago, when I read an article in the newspaper about a young girl who helped out police dogs in her community, I knew that's what I wanted to do for my capstone project. After doing lots of research, planning, and decision making, I was ready to start my three goals. My first goal was to hold an assembly for the canine demonstration at the PE field for grades K to 4. My second goal was to raise money by selling bandanas, dog toys, special stickers with my organization's name and logo, and dog treats. My final goal was to become better at public speaking and to raise awareness. I would raise awareness at a local gym that my family and I remember to, and I would also put up a GoFundMe page where people can donate. The page would have a detailed description of my project toward which would help raise awareness. After going to panel I was, and receiving my green light from Mrs. Zolnowski, I was finally ready to start my capstone project. Going into capstone, there are always going to be obstacles, and I can definitely say that this is true. Over the course of my project, I faced many obstacles and problems that I had to overcome to keep me on track with completing my three goals. My first major obstacle was when I stopped getting replies from my organization. I later found out that the director of Massachusetts Best of Dog had retired, and the new director would not respond to my emails and calls. This really set me back. After the endless calls and emails we had sent, we had finally gotten a response, and this gave me a feeling of relief to know that I was back in contact with my organization. Another obstacle I encountered were the items I would be selling at the farmer's market. The director emailed me and told me that they did not allow home-baked goods to be sold, which were the dog treats. I revised this by making cards and debts to sell. The next obstacle I faced were the dates for the farmer's market. I had spoken to one of my friends and we had made the plan to sell together on three dates with the okay from the farmer's market. The next day I had received an email from the director saying that there was confusion for the dates and I could not sell alongside my friend. I had ended up only being able to sell once, but I overcame this by surpassing my goal of $300, so there was no need for me to sell again. My next challenge was to raise where I to the gym. Unfortunately, the gym was scheduled to close the next month, which did not give me enough time to plan and present my project. My advisor helped me make the decision that speaking at the assembly and at the farmer's market would be enough practice. The next few conflicts involved my assembly. When I spoke with Officer Gilboy from the Franklin Police Department, he told me that I could only have two grades at a time at the assembly, so the police dog would not get overwhelmed. This was an easy fix. I just adjusted the grades to fourth and fifth. The assembly was originally supposed to be in June, but Officer Gilboy had told me that September would work better for him and the dog. Another problem with my assembly was that the dog from the Franklin Police Department had just recently passed away, and there was nobody to come and do the demonstration. It took us a while to find a replacement, and it was a major setback, but eventually I got in contact with Officer Gilboy, and he helped me find someone to do the demonstration. The last problem I faced was about the money I had raised. At this point, I had raised all my funds and I was ready to hand it over to the, my organization. If they had not responded to me in time, I would not have been able to hand over the money by the capstone due date. After all the conflicts and obstacles I faced came very positive results. I surpassed my goal of $300 and ended up making $800 for both the farmer's market and the GoFundMe page. I also spread a lot of awareness and got people interested in my cause and ways that they could help out. And lastly, I had fun. There are many people I would like to thank for helping me complete my capstone project. I would like to thank my advisor, Mr. McSweeney, for helping me through the process of capstone, my advising group and Mrs. L's advising group for all their support, my family with dealing with my anger and frustration, as well as driving me everywhere, of course, Massachusetts Vested Dog and Joshua from Massachusetts Vested Dog for letting me work with them and for helping out police dogs all across Massachusetts. Officer Michelle and Brady from the Menden Police Department for helping me with my demonstration, as well as Officer Gilboy and his former canine partner, Axe, from the Franklin Police Department. Mrs. Zolnowski for giving me my green light and allowing me to start my project, my friends and everybody who donated or bought something from the farmer's market. And lastly, I would like to thank you for listening. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Kelly. Congratulations. Um, our final
presenter this morning will be Ethan Goldman, who's going to talk about working with the Heading Home Incorporated for his capstone presentation. Come on up. Good morning, students, parents, and faculty of the SECDS. My name is Ethan Goldman. For my capstone project, I chose to address homelessness. There are many definitions for homelessness, one of them being an individual who lacks housing, including an individual whose primary residence during the night is a supervised public and private facility. An example for this are shelters that provide temporary living accommodations. I am sure that most, if not all of you, have seen someone who is homeless, maybe even a family that fits this definition, likely someone that on the street. I think homelessness is a topic that is generally overlooked in this world and not really recognized. One of the leading causes for homelessness is unemployment, but even more so traumatic events. An example of this would be divorce. About 0.5% of the U.S. population consists of homeless people. That may not sound like a lot, but that's about 1.56 million people, some of which reasons are out of the person's control. Once I found this out, I knew this had to be addressed and chose this for my topic. Next in time to research for an organization to work with. After several organizations, one of them stood out above, to me above, uh, above all in particular, Heading Home Incorporated. They're a nonprofit organization that ultimately works in homelessness altogether, starting in Boston and many other surrounding towns and cities. They provide emergency, transitional, and permanent housing and support services to low-income homeless and formerly homeless families and individuals. The first goal that I chose to work towards was raising $200, which I would do by instead of collecting gifts for my birthday, I received donations. My second goal was to raise awareness for, homeless, for homelessness. I accomplished this by making a video that educated you about homelessness, and this I put on morning now. I would also do a brief presentation to friends and family that came over from my house which would also contrib contribute to my third and personal goal. This was to get more comfortable public speaking, as I tend to fidget and get nervous. Of course, my capstone project also came along with obstacles. My first obstacle that I encountered was the day of my birthday party. The day was moved back for a long time, even over a month. My second obstacle that I faced was changing my first goal. I was originally going to collect donations of household items, but for various reasons, it made a lot more sense to collect money. Money gave me a much more concrete number rather than a rough number of items. Also, my brother was, was collecting money, so it made it much easier for the donor. My third and final obstacle was procrastination. This affected me later in the process as I was reaching the final due date. I hadn't even started working on the video, but I was online, not even thinking about my caption video, and I stumbled across the website which I would later use to make my video very close to the deadline. And this is how I came to my fourth and final big obstacle. After I spent many, many hours on my video, only to realize it cost $99 to publish it. But I brought this problem to Mr. Chu, and he helped me get the video without paying anyone. For, I reached my first goal, where it was $240 for heading on me, $40 for the original goal. I put my video on the morning announcements, so I achieved my second goal of raising awareness, and however I feel after this speech will determine if I accomplish my third and final goal. I would like to thank Mr. McSween, my advisor for helping me with this project, my advising group, my friends for donating the money to my cause, my parents, just in general, helping me with ideas, my brother, Mr. Du, for helping me a lot with the video, Ms. Alnowski for giving me a green light at the, final, at the beginning stages of the process. And finally, all of you for listening.
Um, so first and foremost, I need to thank our capstone coordinators, Chris Peter and Jen Sunday. Um, Thank you guys very much.